name is Raleigh Jones. Born May 31st. I'm 19 years old. Play football. Adrian Harris, Raleigh Jones' dad, number eight. Like I had to see him living his dream. He had to take two years off. Once he graduated, he glad to be out there watching him do what he did. Uh, I did all right, but could have did did better. But this week should be a lot better. Did you do anything different to prepare for the game tomorrow? Stretch more, work out a lot. Nothing different, but just my mindset's different. Do you think he's doing something constructive? I'm all for it. So when you're done here with work, what are you gonna go do to prepare, prepare for the game tomorrow? Uh, go take me on ice bath. I take those a lot. It helps a lot. Relax my muscles. Pretty much what I do and relax. So do you worry about him getting injured? And I know it comes along with the territory. He tore his ACL. MCL in his uh, lateral meniscus in high school, so he had to miss his sophomore year. Came back his junior year. Because I tore my my, knee, my ACL my sophomore year, so it was just, I don't want to go back to that ex experience. It was, just, it was just very scary, but right now it's fine. I'll, I'll fight through it. It doesn't really matter to me, but. Is, right. is there anything you can do to help prevent the injury, or, or is it just one of those things that's going to happen? It's just going to happen. You just try not to think about injuries too much. Injuries, it's a physical game, so injuries going to happen no matter what. Yeah. So, I mean, how how much is that how your past injuries lingering, lingering in your thoughts as you're playing or as you're practicing? Or? I really don't think about it too much. I just go out there and play. If it happens, it happens. Like, could you do? You, tr you try not to think about it so that way it doesn't impact the way you play. Or? Yeah, because if I think about it a lot, it's, I'm not gonna be 100 percent. It was a hard one. We almost lost for the first time in a long time. We wasn't prepared very well. After blowing everybody out, we just thought it was going to be easy, but that backfired on us. Was this the first time the team was ever down at a half or at a quarter? Or? Yes, first time since, since they started this football team. It's an ugly game. Do you remember the score at the, at the end of the, what was the score at the, at the, at the end of the, yeah. Eight, six. Okay. And uh, anything you remember of the team wasn't clicking or over? It was a lot of, seemed like a lot of animosity. It wasn't the usual Texas X-ray I'm used to. It was really not a lot of talking on the sideline. A lot of teammates getting into it with each other. Mm -hmm. Once they regain their composure, they got seven and zero. Um, third quarter, uh, what happened? Did it, did they come back or did they were they still having animosity there? Or? Getting up the third quarter, it was still a little, it was still a little shaky. I mean, it really wasn't until, I say about eight, nine minutes left in the fourth quarter, mm -hmm. and they finally just really started jelling, made a big play, and it was uh, changing the momentum. We needed a slap in the face, so we can turn around and take over. Um, do you want to talk about Vondell a little bit? How he's kind of been like a breakout guy? Oh, yeah. I put, uh, I got Vondell on the team. I already knew his talent. Nobody else did. He's a great asset to the team. Great player. 
just, he helped our team a lot. With his speed, his agility, the way he run the ball, it just, he's amazing for us. Um, so as a parent, do you, are you like behind Riley? Do you tell him, do you point out his flaws or mistakes as the games or you just kind of let him? It's been like that since he was in Pee Wee. He would get mad because that would be the first thing after the game, he'd be happy. He even got a couple of interceptions, tackles. And the first thing I would point out is the mistakes. So he doesn't get caught up in doing good or in the win itself and continue to work hard at getting better. This coming up game is a playoff game. We already played this team, but treat it as a playoff game and don't take nobody for granted. Because everybody's trying to beat us, so we just gotta put 70 on them, and just finish out every game for yeah, the rest I noticed, of the season. I noticed on the website you guys are leading your division or something, so, are, so is the word out on you guys pretty much now? Or? Yeah, we're the team to beat. Like. Nobody's wanting us to win. A lot of teams from Houston don't want us to win. We're the only team in Austin that's undefeated. So everybody wants us to lose. So we got a big target on the back. Last week game was it was fun. They was really upset that we smashed them real bad. But overall we played well. Could have done better, but played well. First half, it was a lot of talking back and forth amongst the teams. And then when I caught my interception, it was just, after that, it was just quiet. We just started running up the score on them and they couldn't really say much for it. But it was, it was just funny to see their reaction. So how do you feel about trash talking in sports? Uh, it always happened. I, I don't have a problem with it, but if you trash talk, you gotta at least back it up. So if you just trash talk for no reason, there's no point of you trash talking. All night. Oh, shut the fuck up. You've been on your ass all night. You've been on your ass all night. It was three bitches. You know me. You know me. That's you. You know me. That's you. You know me. All night. You might have saw some. There's a difference between trash talk and just talking trash, I guess. Same thing, but... You think you get carried away at times? Or? Of course. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. Do you, do you fear that as a parent that he might say something or somebody else might say something and it might get taken the wrong way, might elevate to a fight, or...? This season, I haven't been as... I haven't been as cautious as I have been in the past with him playing football. It's like I say, the two years in between him graduating high school and coming out here and playing for the extreme, it gave him time to check his attitude. I still worry because I know it's in him, but he's shown me this season that he's matured a whole lot. And he's been able to walk away from a lot of things that in the past, he would have just blew up short fuse and thought about you know the consequences later. So. We gotta stay humble and just go out there and get this win. Whoever wins, take home field advantage, and we can't lose. This is the last game for you, the season, your season, right? I mean, regular season, yeah. Do you have to have one more game? I think they make up one more game. 
So if we win this, we're done. We won't play for like three weeks. So that'll be a whole time for us to rest, go to the game plan, and go in playoff mode, and just try to go to the championship. Oh man, exciting, exciting. Your touchdown saving tackle there, or you can see that? Um, it was, well, how I looked at it, I was on my man, and after I got him out to play, I saw he was the dude that caught the ball. He was wide open, and he just was taking it to the house. And I was like, "Well, maybe somebody's gonna catch him." But when I saw nobody was gonna catch him, so I was like, "Well, it's my job to try to go get him and try to save this tackle. I mean, it's a touchdown." And once I got there, and I did, he was like on the five yard line, and I got him out of bounds. That that really gave us boost our confidence, and we led them to no score on that drive. It was, you guys were only up by six at that time, right? Yeah, we was only up by six. And then you guys ended up holding them at the goal line, right? Yeah, we held them at the goal line. So you think that was a complete momentum or a second Yeah, or? That's, that, set it every, that set everything in motion, because we wasn't going to give up, and everybody knew that we wasn't. And that's when he said. Because it's a lot of different game, as you know, from a team, from their perspective, where they're down by, not only are they already down by six, but they got stuck in, they got stopped in the red zone. Yeah. Right? And you guys are looking, as opposed to going into, you know, the next drive, the next quarter, maybe they might be up by, you know, by one or two, you know, be up eight or seven or six, right? Yeah, it was, just, it was more like our back was against the wall and they had a chance to score, but we held our ground and fought them off, so that, that was a real confidence boost for us. No! Just keep doing what y'all doing. Let's go on and finish strong. And get prepared for the playoffs. And make it happen. Team is really focused, really coming together. Where our mindset is different from the regular season. That we know it's a make it a make it or break it. It's a win or lose situation. So we just focus on winning right now and trying to get this dub. Okay, so how long has it been since the last game? It's been three weeks. We practiced, well, it's been three weeks. The first week we was off, we rest up, then came back for the second week. That was a pretty bad practice week because most people was working and we really had a turnout. And then, but this week, everyone showed up to practice. Everyone is focused. Everybody getting their mind right. We're going on a new game plan. And we're just trying to trying to look, uh, have our eyes on the goal. Yeah, everybody turned on a different switch. It's, it just kill mode from here on out. So it's just, possible to go from practice mode to game mode just like that, or? Oh, yeah, well, you practice how you play. We just trying to, trying to keep it in game situation. The whole time at practice, just, we going over scenarios, two-minute drill and fourth downs we just try to keep it 
as game like as possible. So the practice you guys been taking a lot more serious than the whole season. Yes, it's, this week been a lot more serious. A lot of people more focused. A lot of people more on their game. So it should be a good turnout since everybody's on. Even when we don't have anybody on practice, we still go out there and dominate. But this should be different because we're having a different look at the extreme. Uh, Facebook, man, it's a lot of drama. Uh, we have a whole league page on Facebook. So dude from the Broncos, first time we played them, it's the first week we played them and beat them. Now he said that we're gonna win it all. So, and everybody just started saying that we're not good. The coach, the refs been cheating for us. We got the coach, uh, refs on the payroll. We dirty, we trash talk too much. It just, everybody just don't like to give us our credit. So we just gonna stay humble, let them sleep on us. And we just gonna bring the fire every time. Oh man, the game was great. First half, it's like all always we start out slow, and then by second half we just pick it up. I don't know why, but I guess second half is where we do the best. Is it I guess frustrating knowing, especially in the first half, because I mean it's a pattern because it's not only happened this game, not the last game, but a few other games where you guys are not or some in one case you're down at the half, but you're kind of. And the score should be a lot bigger than what it is. So is it frustrating knowing you're a better team, but yet you're not winning by much? Or, and yeah, I, it, yeah. We that's why we always get into it before. I mean, before halftime, it's because we know we're better than that. We can blow any team out, but we just don't click at the beginning, and we need to get over that hump. Whenever we get over that hump we'll blow anyone out in the first quarter and they'll probably quit before halftime. On that term, do you want to talk about the halftime incident this past game? Or? Uh, halftime incident was just, it was, it was both of our fault. I guess it was just the heat and blaming each other on the touchdown because everybody gets upset when somebody scores on us and they always quit to blame someone and and I just got tired of it and just told them, like, you messed up, we messed up. Just don't keep on blaming it on us because you have a fault in that too. And it just got heated at that moment. But we bounced back, we made up, and we just dominated after that. What was the play call? What coverage were you guys in? We was, we ran our blitz, but the blitz was to the right side. I'm on the left side and my safety ended up blitzing and when he didn't supposed to. So when he blitzed, the right corner, I mean right safety blitzed at the same time. I had another I had two receivers, so I was holding my man, and when I turned around, the slot receiver was wide open and he ended up throwing that right there. I couldn't get over in time and he ended up throwing a touchdown. And like everybody started blaming me and I was like, that wasn't my fault. I didn't, I had two people I had to guard. That, that's no, no way, you can't blame me for something I didn't do. But that's how everything just started. And then they started jumping off sides, not watching the ball. And I'm telling them like, you're right in front of the ball. Why are you jumping off sides? And it just, it just sparks from there. We were just getting into it.
coach got on at on our ass at the beginning, but because we are we were just playing like shit. Like they should not be that close to us. We we're better than that. But we just came together. We squashed everything that happened, and just we just got fired up and came out the second half even stronger. Now, do you want to talk about your interception? Uh, play by play, what happened? Well, going through that moment. Well, I guess starters, you were in safety, right? Or they moved you to safety? Or yeah. All right. Well, okay. what happened is because coach, my DB coach, I was on the sideline, and then he was like. He was like, Riley, come here. And I was like, all right. Um, he was like, you want to go in? There's nine minutes left in the game. He was like, do you want to go in? I was like, yeah, I want to go in. He was like, all right, take Mikey at corner. I was like, okay. And then he stopped and he smiled. I was like, mm. in my head, I'm like, what kind of trick he got? And he was like, and I was like, yeah, I'm going to safety, huh? He said, yeah. Go to safety this way, and I was like, but in my head, I was like, man, I'm nervous. I haven't played safety in the game. I was kind of scared. I don't want to mess up. And I was like, okay. Well, I went out there, and number 16, he's like the fastest player on their team, and he was at their slot receiver. I was like, he's going to end up throwing the ball to him. So I shaded over to his side, and right when he snapped the ball, he ran a go. And I was like, okay, Mario. He jammed him good, so it gave him a the delay on a on a passing. And once he threw it in the air, it was like all oh, weird looking. And I just ran under, under it, and I just just took off. The quarterback tried to hit me. I broke that tackle, and it was just tunnel vision from there. And I just took off and scored. So let's talk about why did you choose semi-pro football instead of college? Um, well, I didn't know I was going. I wanted to go to college. I wanted to go D1. I get. I I thought I was good enough to go D1, but when when I went to City Creek, we didn't have a good record. We was a new school, so no nobody was really looking at us. So, but. I had a chance. My coach had me an opportunity to just go, but he left right before anything happened. So I was really stuck by myself and I really didn't know what to do. So I just tried to send my stuff out to coaches and stuff, but nothing really came back. And I'll just, I thought I was going to be done with football for the rest of my life. So I just started working. I really didn't want to go to college because I really didn't like school. I just wanted to play football. But then I found, found semi-pro. I was I was I was supposed to start last year, but I was I had a chance to go to Blend, but money and everything wasn't right, so I just let that go, and I just started this year. But God had been good, and He just this is just an alternate route from college. The road that he's taken, it, it's a lot more prosperous now than it was when I was growing up to make it to the league. So, so like I say, he almost didn't want to go the closer it got to the combine to try out for the extreme. Like I told him, and all you can do is go out there and leave it on the field. And whatever happens, just don't let that deter you. Just keep going. Keep going. And... But yeah, I think it's 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 a good way for players to continue their dream because there are a lot of players that have signed to the NFL that started off playing semi for semi pro teams. All it takes is for the right person to see you doing what you love. Yeah, I thought I wasn't I wasn't good enough 
I thought a lot of people was gonna be better than me. A lot of people are better than me, but I just I just told myself just play your game and just have fun at the combine, and that's what I did. And they they loved me. They they wanted me to start right away, and Extreme just been a family ever since. Did you ever do any conditioning before the combine, or were you just ready to go? Oh yeah, I, I stayed focused. I just I sit I. I just ran, worked out, and try not to just just knock the rust off since those two years I've been gone. But nothing had changed, and I just went out and just gave it my all. Was there a time when you, I guess you had to call him out not to punk out, or, or a time where you thought he just really wasn't going to do it? Or? <laughs> yeah, there's been plenty of times, but a lot of it boiled down to the fact of him finally realizing when I would tell him, it's what the coaches see that you do when you're away from the field that stands out the most and he would always ask me what are you talking about what are you talking about i say look at when y'all come back from the off season how long it takes certain people to get back in shape and the ones that come in in shape i say even during the off season you have to keep pushing the more you let up the more you have to you know the more you have to redo when it's time to step on the field so but yeah, there's been a lot of times I had to call him out. He used to get mad when he was younger because I would call him out after the game on the things that he did wrong when he would be ready to celebrate the things he did right. And it's like I tell him, I don't do it to sound harsh. I just do it so you don't get so caught up in the winning that you forget about taking care of putting in the work to get better. So. No, I just look at it, it all worked out because they the main thing is the family atmosphere that the, the extreme has. You come in, your family, and they make you feel that way. There are people I've met on the team that I've seen, you know, people play semi-pro football, and it's just what they do. I've seen a lot of good teams, but it's like we come together, we play, and that's it. It's like, I may not hang out with a lot of people on the team, but when I do see them, they make you feel like family, so. Yeah, I, I didn't, I was scared to try out, but I didn't know I was gonna be a starter like I am now. I, I got way better from end of high school to now. I got a lot better. And it, it's shown, it's shown a lot. And I just, I. I know football now. I know more of the game, and it's just about having fun instead of taking all the little bad things and holding it and just playing playing the game. That's it. But I ain't gonna say I'm better than a lot of people. It's just they taught me and and show me where's my strength my strength is and. And they gave me an opportunity to start, and I've been shining ever since. Do you think that's where a lot of the hostility and jealousy from some of the other teams on the league come from? Because not only are you guys better and beating them by like 30, 40 points, but you guys are, like you said, a family and have a lot of camaraderie as opposed to where they're probably not playing so good because they're not a family? Or yeah, it's just because of the humbleness. That's the main thing. A lot of the people, you see them having fun. You see them joking, but it, it's the humbleness about it. So yeah, they be upset because when we're winning, we have fun. Like even if we're we're down, like that one game, we got on each other, but we just picked each other up at the same time and just went after it. A lot of people, we just we just ruthless. They having fun want, doing it. So hey, nobody want us. They don't. Nobody wants to lose. But when we make when we win, it makes it even. It hurts, so they wanna they wanna talk mess to us and say we cheat and say we do all this stuff. But they just they just can't stop us. And the only way they can try to get under our skin is just talk. That's it. So and it took a lot of years to get used to the talk, not to react to it, right? Yeah, these guys are used to it. I just let everything go. And just play ball. That's all you gotta do. Talking ain't gonna get you nowhere. It's just you still 
still gotta look at the scoreboard at the end of the game. When you talking, but we playing. And we running up the score every time. It's like, man, growing up, I was always raised, if you meet a woman that has a child, you have to accept that whole package. It's like I say, what really took the cake was when his mom introduced me to him and she told me his name, he crawled to me. And once I picked him up, he held his hands up for me to pick him up. And once I did, he laid his head on my shoulder. So it's like I say, I've been sold ever since. So. Well, it's kind of kind of blurry to me, but when I I knew he was my dad, but he they already told me that I had a real dad at the same time, and when I finally realized, when I saw my real dad for the first time, I knew that he was my real dad. But he always played uh he always played a father figure in my life, and I'm just grateful that he always been there. He he did what most men couldn't do. It was, he was, when, when I didn't have nobody there, he was always there and he, he really touched everything because he, he taught me everything when my dad couldn't, when my dad wasn't there. I just had him, but it wasn't ever a, a stepdad or a, a real dad. He was just always my dad. Mm -hmm. No matter what. So, so because of him, you never really had a need or a want to look for your biological or see your biological father in much? Or? Not. Um, I still keep keep in touch with my my real dad, but my real dad knows that he wasn't there. But my dad came in mm -hmm. and stepped, filled his place. So there was no really butt heads. It just it always worked out. He was always there, no matter what.